He's able. He delivered us when we weren't even worthy of being delivered. He brought us all the way from the time of the Garden of Eden all the way till we right back to the place of entering right back in to the Garden of Eden again. He's made full circle. He made it where he would take us and deliver us and bring us safely home again. Hallelujah. Amen. Love. Even when we didn't deserve it. Even when we wasn't worthy. He made us worthy. He said, your righteousness is filthy rags. So he took us and stripped us of our rags. Went to the cross. Crucified his own body. Yes. Let it be bled out yes, he did. to cover each and every one of us. Yes. I don't have a filthy rag anymore. I don't have one. He gave me his. And when he gave me his, he gave me perfection. You cannot find no fault in God. You can only find fault in the flesh. And the Bible said, know no man after the flesh, but know him after the spirit. So if he has the spirit of God, he has no sin, and therefore you have to recognize him as a child of God. Hallelujah. And knowing that, that does away with judgment, and it brings on perfection. Give the Lord a hand clap as Brother Joy comes this way. I don't know if him and his wife sing it. I don't know what they're doing. But they do. And God has brought them this way to help us. Thank you. I know that Brother Greg's been sick and I wanted to sing this little song from him. Uh, Exodus chapter 26, 25, verse 15, or chapter 15, verse 25, I forget which way it is. He says, I am the God that healeth thee. Amen. That's right. And uh, I know Greg's been sick and uh, some of you, some, uh, so there's some more people in here that, that's got things wrong in your body. I want to ask you to stand one more time. I'm just going to sing this little song. Uh, it's real simple. I want you to lift your hands if you need a touch in your body today. If you need a touch, a physical touch in your body, amen. God can heal you right where you stand. Nobody has to come lay hands on you or blow on you or breathe on you. And we do those things at times. But, uh, you know, God can touch you right where, right where, he, right where you stand. So I want to sing this little song right here. This is straight out of the Bible, and it just goes like this. I am the God that healeth thee. I am the Lord, your healer. I sent my word, and I healed your disease. I am the Lord, your healer. I am the God that healeth thee. I am the Lord, your healer. I sent my word and I healed your disease. I am the Lord, your healer. If you need a touch from God, just lift your hands. I am the God that he left thee I am the Lord your healer I sent my word and I healed your disease I am the Lord your healer You're gonna sing it one more time I am the God that he left thee I am the Lord, your healer. I sent my word and I healed your disease. I am the Lord, your healer. I sent my word and I healed your disease. I am the Lord your healer
Amen. Pastor Greg called me and asked me to come and uh, try to preach today. I appreciate the opportunity. Uh, since I was here last time, I wanted to tell uh, tell the church, uh, for, thank you for helping me. Since I was here last time, I, Cheryl and I have been to over around Belize and Guatemala preaching. I've been there many times, and this church helped me go on that trip. And I appreciate uh, your help. I really do. And uh, we just closed a two-week tent revival in Dahlonega, Georgia, where I live, and uh, been, in, been in meeting two, two weeks every night. I'm, I'm tired in body this morning, but I'm strong in spirit. Amen. And I tell you, God moves in these old tent meetings we have, and uh, he really does. But we've been going for two weeks every night. It's been wonderful. It really has. And uh, I leave July the 17th for Bogota, Colombia, South America, going on another overseas crusade. That, that uh, hunger is in me to go. That drive is in me to go, amen. A lot of people don't understand. A friend of mine uh, up in his 80s died uh, on a foreign mission field a couple of years back, three, four years ago, and I think he was uh, in Honduras, him and his wife was over there. He was, they were ministering and they were up in their 80s and they got in an automobile accident and he passed away from that. And um, there was a lot of talk around the funeral. What is a man in his 80s out doing something like that for? Why wasn't he at home in a rocking chair? What? And the preacher that preached the funeral got up and read the scripture in the Bible where it says, go ye. A lot of people don't understand the go ye, amen. When God calls you to go, no matter if you're 16 or 85, if you're able to go, when that, when that go ye is spoken in your life, you've got to go. It drives you. It pushes you, Bob. Bob knows. It, it, it drives you. It pushes you. And, and no matter how tired you get, no matter what you you have to do, you, you want to go, you got to go. So foreign country missions and revivals and crusades is one of the things that, that we do a lot of and that go ye is there. And I tell you what, if you ever, if you ever go and you, you see the hunger that those people have, it does something to you. It changes you into a different person, amen. But it's good to be here today. I want my wife to stand up and say a, say a little word. She's quiet and shy. She don't say much. She's like Georgie. She don't talk much. Bob quit laughing about that. <laughs> but I want Cheryl. Oh, come up here, honey. Come up here and do it. I want her to come up here and say a word this morning. Amen. We want to thank you for the opportunity to come and... Um Y'all have blessed us many times since we've been here, and we just want to give God the praise and glory. We want to thank Brother Greg. I know he means a lot to Joey, and Joey means a lot to him. I um, don't know him very much, but I do feel we do have a kindred spirit because we're joined with the Father, right? So um, just want everyone to know that I do feel the spirit of the Lord in this house. And that's what we need, don't we? Because if we don't have God, we don't have nothing. And sometimes the troubles of the life, of our life, and this little sister here in the yellow, I heard you crying. And I wanted to sing a song for you, but I don't have the, I don't have the track with me today. But just know that God is your strength. And he's there with you in the midnight hours. I'm, I lost my dad several years ago. Didn't think I could make it without my dad. And I still hurt and I still cry. A lot of times, Joey don't know, but I'll be coming home from work and I'll just think about my dad and just start crying because I miss him so much. But just know that he's in the great, your mother will be in that great cloud of witnesses and she'll be happy and she'll be whole. Just like I, I'm sure a lot of you've lost loved ones, but just know if they had God and they was, you know, if, if they was bought by the blood of Jesus, we're, we know where they're at and we know where we're going. Thank you. Hallelujah. 
Amen. It's good to see Bob and Georgie again today. <laughs> Appreciate them so much. Uh, precious friends of mine, and I'll always love them and never forget them. And and uh, they just been such a help to me in my life. And when I was just a young preacher, uh, I know I said this when I was here at camp meeting, but it's okay. I want to say it again. When I was just a young preacher, they were such an inspiration to me and stood behind me and helped me. And Brother Bob's helped me put my tent up many, many times. And and uh, when I was younger and a lot thinner, <laughs> he helped me a lot. And Georgie's cooked a lot of meals for us. And, and Bob supported me financially and helped me what he could. And I'll never forget people that's helped me in my lifetime. And I know you've heard this before, but I stood in this church when I was about 12 years old. It was about the first place I ever preached out other than just my little home church or maybe I'd stood and testified a little bit, but uh, one of the first appointments to preach I ever had in my life was right here in this church. And Bob McKinney gave it to me. I'm 45 years old today. I was 12 years old there, so that's a long time ago. And he's still here, and I am so thankful. I know he wants to go home someday, but I'm glad they're still here with us. How about you, Bob and Georgie? Give them a big hand, amen? Amen. Praise God. I want to bring just a little word to you today from the fifth chapter of John, if you'll turn with us there, the fifth, fifth chapter of John. Very familiar story. I want to bring just a little message to you from there. I'm going to read the first nine verses from John chapter 5. And I'm going to preach just a little bit this morning. If you'll turn with us to John chapter 5. After this, there was a feast of the Jews and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda, having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of impotent folk, blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever then first, after the troubling of the water, stepped in, was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. And a certain man was there which had an infirmity thirty and eight years. When Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been now a long time in that condition, in that case, he said unto him, Wilt thou be made whole? The impotent man answered him, Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool, but while I am coming, another steppeth down before me. Verse nine, and immediately the man was made whole, and he took up his bed and walked, and on the same day was the Sabbath. Father, we thank you this morning. We've already felt your spirit in this house today. I never walk in this church, God, when I don't feel your spirit. For many years, some 40, 50 years, I'm not sure, but I know this sanctuary has been saturated with the spirit of God. Thousands upon thousands of services have been conducted in this sanctuary. And God, I believe and know in my heart that you dwell here today because I feel you. And I thank you for this opportunity. God, I am not worthy to stand here this morning only by your precious blood. Am I worthy? But I thank you for this opportunity. I pray that you send this word out today to those that are here, that it would be a help and an encouragement to them. I come today to lift somebody up through the word of God. I come today to tell somebody something that would help them along the way to make it, God, another day. I thank you and ask you to bless and anoint this word as it comes forth from lips of clay and we thank you for it in Jesus' name, amen. 
Give the Lord a great big hand clap for his word today. Amen. I'm sure you've read this story and heard this story a hundred times, a thousand times, and probably heard many preachers speak on it. It's one of the great stories in the Bible. I want to preach a few minutes today on a message entitled, I Have No Man. I Have No Man. I Have No Man. In this story, a gentleman had been sick for 38 years, couldn't help himself, couldn't do anything for himself, but he laid by a pool called Bethesda, the Bible said, and once a year, an angel would come down and trouble that water, put healing in that water, and whoever got in it first was made whole of whatever they had. And this happened once, once a year. And this gentleman had been like this for 38 years, trying to get in that water. But he was dependent upon a man, upon somebody, because he couldn't do it for himself. He was dependent upon somebody to get him in there. And it just never happened because every time he tried to get in, somebody got in in front of him. So Jesus came by, and that day he didn't need a man. After Jesus came by, he no longer needed a man. He no longer was dependent on somebody else but the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords passed by that day. And that day, the man that had been waiting for 38 years on another man waited no longer. Somebody say amen. Because Jesus came by that day. And I want to preach just a few minutes this morning on I have no man. Because we are pronged and we tend to depend on humanity and we tend to depend too much on what people can do and not what God can do. Somebody say amen. God gave me three little things and I write stuff down so nobody don't you know, be offended by it. I don't need a paper to preach or anything like that but if I don't write it down I tend to forget it. And when God's speaking to me, I write stuff down. I wrote a book that way. For six months, the Lord visited me and would get me up at night and talk to me and tell me things that I did not know, things I'd never heard. And I wrote a book, God's Table Manners, that was sold across the country in many states because God gave it to me. So I write things down when God is speaking to me. I have no man. I got three things I, I wrote down, Greg, that the Lord talked to me about last night as I was preparing to come here today. And I want you to put these in your heart or put them down on paper or something, but number one, man will let you down, but Jesus will lift you up. Man will let you down, but Jesus will lift you up. You remember the story in Acts chapter 3 where Paul and Silas was about to go into the temple and there was a man sitting there that was asking alms of them. And as they passed by, the famous words they said was silver and gold. Have I none? So it was Peter and John, wasn't it? Excuse me, Peter and John about to go into the temple at the hour of prayer. I don't know why I said Paul and Silas. They were in jail. How many have ever been in jail? <laughs> Peter and John. Their famous words were silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, give I thee in the name of Jesus Christ, rise and walk. And the Bible said that they took him by the right hand and what? Lifted him up. Man will let you down, but Jesus will lift you up. 
For 38 years, this gentleman in the Bible, for 38 years, this gentleman in the Bible was dependent on a man, was dependent on somebody, amen, to help him get in that pool of water, but for year after year after year, somebody let him down and did not get him in the water that was troubled. I wanna tell all of us today that man will let you down, but Jesus will lift you up. I'm telling you right now, you cannot put all your trust and all your confidence in a person. You cannot put all your trust and all your confidence in a man because man can only go so far. Man makes mistakes. Man messes up. Man don't always have the answer. But I'm telling you right now, I know somebody, amen, when man lets you down, I'm telling you Jesus will lift you up. I've come to tell somebody today, you don't need a man, you don't need a man, you don't need a man. What I need and what you need is Jesus to come on the scene. Somebody help me today. I don't know how long you've been waiting on somebody to do something that they have not done, but quit waiting on them and say, God, you do it, you do it. You do it. Somebody say amen. Woo. Oh, God. My God. Man will let you down, but Jesus will lift you up. The Bible said they took him by the right hand and lifted him up. Woo. Man is not always there when you need him. Huh? Man Cannot, cannot, cannot always get you in the water that's been troubled. Hello? A lot of folks has depended, thank you, my brother. A lot of folks has depended on men down through the years and only got disappointment. But I'm telling you right now, as I stand here today, some 35 years of holding a microphone in my hand, Jesus has never one time, Bob, let me down. I've sure let him down, but he's never, Greg, let me down. He's always there when I need him. He may not come when I want him to, but he comes when he gets ready. Hallelujah. Woo. I've had a lot of men let me down. Huh? And I've probably let some people down myself. You might sit there and say, well, I've never done that. You might need to check up a little. You might need to go to the doctor's office and get a checkup. Huh? I would say all of us has at one time or another let somebody down. Maybe we didn't mean to, but we did it anyhow. But I'm telling you, you don't need a man today. God's got me preaching this message in this church today for somebody. There's somebody here that needs to hear this message. I don't know who it is. God only knows. But somebody here needs this message today. I need it myself. Man will let you down. But Jesus will lift you up. Amen. Somehow, some way. You know, years ago, it seemed like people really depended on God. Now we've got so much stuff and so many avenues and so many ways to go and so many other ways we can get an answer. It seems like God is the last thing this day and time that we depend on. I hope you're not depending on the White House today because you ain't gonna get much. Hope you're not depending on Congress or senators or, or all these people. They'll tell you everything and do nothing. Somebody help me. They'll promise you everything in the world. These representatives, man, they'll, they're gonna do everything if you'll just vote for me. And then they do nothing or they do right the opposite of what they said they are gonna do. But I'm telling you what Jesus said he would do. He will do it without fail. Somebody say amen. Woo. Hallelujah. I have no man. 
I want to tell you today, you don't need a man. I don't need a man. Sure, people can help us. Sure, people will help us. And there's nothing wrong. Uh, uh, depend on somebody to do something for you. But I'm telling you, don't put your life in the hand of a man. Don't you do it. Put it in the hand of God where it's going to be safe and secure. Woo! <clears throat> then I wrote this down. Man disappoints. God appoints. Huh? Man disappoints. God appoints. Look at Luke chapter 22, verse 29. Luke 22 and 29. Let's see what it says right quick. Luke 22 and 29. Jesus said these words. And I appoint unto you a kingdom as my Father hath appointed unto me. Man disappoints. God appoints. Somebody say amen. He walked by the seashore and saw Peter fishing. And he said, Peter, you've got a new appointment. No longer are you going to fish for fish, but I'm going to make you a fisher of men. God gave Peter a new appointment. Somebody say amen. amen. Stephen was a tax collector. One of, I believe it was him. He collected taxes. Nobody likes a tax collector. He weren't a very liked person. One of them guys, one of those 12 disciples was a tax collector. Jesus said, you've got a new appointment. You're no longer going to be a tax collector. I'm going to make you a preacher. Somebody say amen. Man disappoints, but God appoints. Hallelujah. Paul said that God had appointed him to be a preacher and a prophet. Somebody say an apostle. Somebody say amen. I'm telling you today, man will disappoint you. Man disappoints, but God appoints. And whatever God has appointed you to do, whatever God has appointed you to be, I'm telling you, every devil in hell will try its best to stop you. The devil don't want you doing what God has appointed you to do, and the devil will tell you you can't do it, but God said you could. God said you can. God said you will. Somebody say amen. I want to tell this lady right here, God's appointed you to sing, ma'am. You know that, and I know that. God's appointed you to sing, and I don't care if you've been disappointed by every man in Walton County. God has appointed you to sing, and you need to sing with all you got, and you need to sing more, and you need to sing for God. Somebody say amen. Man disappoints, but God appoints. Huh? Pastor Bob, how many years you pastor this church? Ever since we started, I think. Well, back in the 1800s. 40, 50 years. I guarantee you, and, and that many years, because I, I used to come here when this thing was booming. I guarantee in 40 or 50 years, Brother Bob has had disappointment after disappointment after disappointment after disappointment by people that promised him to do this and do that and do all these things. But I'm telling you, man will disappoint you. But the reason he stayed here is because God appointed him. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. Amen. When man disappoints you, don't forget that God has appointed you and push on. On, press on, go on, run on, give it all you've got. Somebody say amen. Woo! Oh. For 38 years, man disappointed. But Jesus come by and appointed. He said, wilt thou be made whole? Woo! Yes. That man had an appointment. 
whatever God's called you to do, that's your appointment. Listen to me, that's your appointment. I'll never forget this as long as I live. When I was a 10, 12 years old, my grandpa was a Baptist preacher, pastor of Baptist churches and preached and back when the Baptists really had the fire. Now I'm talking about long ago. I went around the house because I lived with my grandparents. They had a big farm and they needed help and I worked on the farm and helped them and I went around there running my mouth. I want to be a preacher. I want to be a preacher. That's what I want to be. One day my grandpa looked at me and he said, son, I'm going to tell you something. It ain't what you think it is. And he said one more thing. He said, you better watch what you ask God for because he might just give it to you. Huh? Amen. Hello? He said he might just give it to you. I know a lot of folks that had somebody and wanted somebody else and when they got to somebody else uh, they realized they had a tiger by the tail. I may need to change subjects on that. Huh? You better watch what you ask God for. He might give it to you. Hello? Woo! Man disappoints. God appoints. Whatever God has appointed you to do. It seems like today everybody wants to be a preacher. Everybody. I've never seen the like of it. And there's churches today on every corner and between every corner. I'm driving to North Carolina with a friend of mine. We're going to preach and we're out in a little, in, in, little Indian reservation. Cherokee Indian Reservation up in that area and we're driving out in the country and there's a house about every three or four miles, not many. We're driving down this country road about 10 miles out of town. Here's the church. On the other side of the road's a church. No houses. Go down the road about a half a mile, a mile. Here's another church. Then another church. Then another church, then another church, then another church, then another, and then a house. And it goes like this for about 10 miles. And I asked him, I said, brother, where does all these people go to? How, how do, who goes to all these churches, I said, I believe it was. We get into town to a little square in a little town, one horse town, just got a few people in it. And my God, around the square, here's a church, there's a church, there's a church, there's a church, there's a church, and they're just everywhere. They had more churches in the town than they had people. And I asked my friend, I said, who goes to all these churches? Everybody today wants a church, and I had one 17 years, and had great success at it, but God changed what I was doing. Everybody wants a church today and everybody wants to be a preacher. Everybody. And it's good if that's what God's appointed you to do. But if he didn't appoint you to it, stay out of it. Oh boy. You'd be amazed how much further you will get when you find that appointment that God has for you. Huh? Man disappoints, but God appoints. Paul was a man that murdered Christians. Am I right? Hated them, murdered them, killed them, done everything he could, but Paul had an appointment. On the road to Damascus, Paul was appointed. Woo! And Paul, was one of the greatest used people in the New Testament. Wrote two thirds of the New Testament because he had the education and the smarts to do it. Much of it he wrote in prison. Huh? Man disappoints. God appoints. Give him a big hand today if you love him. Amen. Amen. Mm. 
Thank you for that water, brother. Listen to this, last one. When you have no man to put you in the water, depend on the Father. Huh? When you have no man to put you in the water, depend on the Father. For 38 years, nobody, nobody, no man, no man would put, would get him, would get him in that water. And that's exactly what he told the Lord. He said, I, I, I have no man. Every story that's recorded in that Bible is there for a reason. There's a message behind it, Bob. And the message behind this story is when you've got no man to put you in the water, depend on the Father. The message in this story is let's get our eyes off men and what men can do and what man can do and we need to get them back on the Lord. People wonder why so many people get healed overseas and why, why do these things happen overseas in foreign lands and foreign countries that don't happen here. I'm gonna tell you why. Because they don't have the money to run to every doctor's office and every clinic in town. I'm not against doctors. I go to them myself. Amen. I've been sick and I've had to go and I've been sick and God healed me and I didn't have to go. Not against them at all. I'm making a point. We got so many options in this country. We got option after option. But when you go overseas in the foreign land, they don't have the money to run to every doctor. It's real expensive. They don't have these options that we got. And most of those people, when they come through a prayer line, amen, God is the only thing they've got. And they get healed and touched because they depended on him. They don't have a man to put them in the water, Bob. They don't have it. They got to depend on God. They got to. He's all they got. My last point, when you got no man to put you in the water, depend on the Father. Huh? I'm about to close here in a minute. But I wouldn't doubt for one minute God may just turn a switch or turn a light on or turn one off. God may just flip a switch and America may not be number one in the world anymore. America may not be the high and mighty and haughty country that we've become that we feel like we just don't need God anymore because we can do it ourselves. God can turn one switch, friend. He can turn one at your house. He can turn one at my house and he can turn one at the White House. Hello? You could step into a doctor's office tomorrow because you don't feel right and, and the doctor could look at you and say, well, I, I see a spot back here. Things can change in a second. When you got no man to put you in the water, depend on the Father. There's a message here today. I, I have no man. That's our trouble. We, we, we got too many men. We're too dependent. Huh? We're too dependent on things that we don't need to be dependent upon. Hello? We're too hooked on things that we don't need to be hooked on. Well, you can't live by faith anymore. You, yeah, you can. I know people that's doing it. I don't know without faith if I'd even be living today. I have no man. Man will let you down. Jesus will lift you up. Man disappoints. God appoints. When you have no man to put you in the water, depend on the Father. That day, 
Jesus said, rise, take up thy bed and walk. And that day he didn't need a man because the master came. Woo-wee. I'm trying to close, I promise. Bob, I really believe, I really believe that God is going to show this country just one more time, Greg, that he can do what nobody can do. He can do what science can't do. He can do what medical can't do. God can do what the psychiatrist can't do. Huh? I have no man. The message today is we need to not to depend so much on men and, and begin to depend again on God. I, I'm not 100% there. You know when a preacher preaches, he's preaching to himself. <laughs> sure he is. If these preachers get up and think they ain't preaching to themselves, they're being mistaken because they are. And I am and Greg is. We're preaching to ourselves. I want you to stand up with me, please. If you would. I'll tell you what I do know. I don't know much but I know things when God's speaking to me and talking to me. I do know there's a person inside this building this morning. You fit the bio, you fit the description of what I've preached about today. You have depended on man to do something and it just has not developed. It hasn't, it hasn't happened yet. And God is talking to all of us today and saying, depend on me. Depend on me. Depend on me. If you're here today, whether it's one or six or 10 or whatever it is, if you're here today and you want to be more dependent on God and less dependent on man, I want you to get out of your seat and walk down here and stand in front of this pulpit today if you could. If you're here today and you want to be less dependent on man, but more dependent on God. I want you to walk down here and, and come and stand in front of this pulpit today. I have no man. I want to tell you when Jesus comes by, you don't need a man no more. You don't need one. You just need him. You just need him. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for this family today. Thank you how they blessed us today in Jesus' name. Thank you for them. God, in the name of the Lord, as they come and stand in your presence today, God, help them to be more dependent on you and less dependent on man. And I'm talking to myself, Lord. Help me. Help each one today that's come. Help us to be more dependent on, on you, Lord and less depended on man. Whatever we may have depended on man to do, to make happen, and they didn't come through, it didn't happen. Lord, we know that you can do it in the name of Jesus. <laughs> we know what man cannot do, you can do. Hallelujah. Woo. Touch them today, Lord, that's come in Jesus' name. Help us be more dependent upon you, Lord. 
less dependent upon man. Hallelujah. Help us all today, God, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo! Touch Brother Bob. Hallelujah. Help our sister today, Lord, in Jesus' name. God, help her to be more dependent on you and less dependent on man. Whatever we may have depended on man for and it didn't happen, God, we look to you today because what man cannot do, Lord, you can do it. We thank you for it today in the name of Jesus. When man says you're going to die, God says you're going to live. When man says there's no cure, Jesus is the cure. When man says there's no answer, Jesus is the answer. When man says I can't help you, Jesus says I can help you. Woo! When man says it can't be done, God says yes it can. Hallelujah. Come on, everybody, let's sing it today. Sing it with Greg. Because he touched me. Everybody, let's sing it. Oh, he touched me. Hallelujah. And oh, the joy that floods my soul. Hallelujah. Something happened. Something. Yes, it did. And now, oh, now I know my Jesus touched me. He made me whole. Can't you imagine that man that laid there for 38 years, Greg, running through the streets saying something happened, something happened, something happened. I had no man to help me, but Jesus came by and he helped me. I didn't have to get in the water. He is the water. Hallelujah. running up to him saying what happened to you did they finally get you in the water did you he said no I, I, I depended on man for 38 years I never got in the water but Jesus came by I didn't have to have a man anymore hallelujah Woo. from a doctor's office come down here and stand in this right here in front of me and let me pray for you we're going to pray for pastor before we close this service if you're here today and you've gotten a bad report come down here and let us pray for you let's see what God says about it touching any one thing two or more agree on touching any one thing it would be done and we come to you in the name of Jesus I have no man man don't seem to have the answer for these requests that our brothers turned in but God you are the answer and we pray over all three of them in the name of Jesus that you come down and touch them and heal them and make them whole for the glory of God we ask this in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, Lord. Hey, my brother, what is it? Your 
brother David. Hallelujah. Father, in Jesus' name, we pray over his brother David. The report that's come in, Lord, you know all about it. We speak over him in Jesus' name. We know that you send your word and you heal people. They don't have to physically be here. You're omnipresent, God. You're everywhere at the same time. We thank you for that today. Holy Ghost, go to this man. Touch him. Heal him in the name of Jesus. Fix it where he need no man. But God gets the credit and the glory for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. I just had a thought, Bob. Come here a second. Can you imagine when little Mary become pregnant by the Holy Ghost with the Son of God? You know what she said? I have no man. That's right. She said, I have no man. God did it. God did that. Hallelujah. Isn't that something? Hallelujah. If he can do that, he can do anything. Hallelujah. Woo. Anyone else today? I don't want to prolong the service. Anyone else today? If you've got a bad report, I want to pray over you. Hallelujah. Let's pray for Barbara, her sister. I'm sure y'all know who that is that's having surgery. We're going to agree today. Father, in Jesus' name, we pray over Barbara today. She's not physically here, but God, you sent your word and healed them, the Bible said. And her sister is standing in proxy for her today. And we agree right now in the name of Jesus that she gets a good report in the name of the Lord that you lay your hand upon her and touch her in Jesus' name. Let your power move upon her today in the name of the Lord. Send your word to her sister Barbara and touch her for your glory today that she need no man that God do the work in Jesus' name. time before we pray over Pastor Greg today. He needs a touch from God. If you've gotten a bad report, it doesn't have to be from a doctor. It could be from anybody, from anything, your job, whatever. If you've gotten a bad report, I want you to come here and let me pray for you. Pray over you. Not that I can do anything, but I'm in touch with somebody that can. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hey, my brother. Thank you for coming. Father, in Jesus' name, we pray over this young man's dad. Seems like the devil attacks him every time he goes out. The devil's trying to do this or do that. We put a hedge upon him today. God, we ask you to put, you, put a hedge around this man that all the fiery darts of the enemy would be quenched in Jesus' name. Move upon this situation. Touch him and help him today for your glory. Let everything go smooth, God, in the name of the Lord. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on up, Greg. We want to pray over the pastor here today and ask God to touch him. He's needing a touch from the Lord.
difference does that make? Yes, she is. Hallelujah. Father, in Jesus' name, Brother Greg's, instead of standing in for his own need, God, he's standing in for this little child that needs this lung. God, we know you're a miracle worker. You work in mysterious ways, the Bible said. We ask you to touch this little child today. God, she's fighting for her life. She has no man today. Man has said we can't do anything. We call upon the king of kings this morning and the Lord of lords. Lay your hand upon, amaze science. Amaze them at what you can do. Somebody's praying for her. And Lord, in the mighty name of Christ, your son, Father, we pray in Jesus' name right now that you touch her for your glory. Make a way, God. Where there is no way, make a way for her. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Bless you. Bless you. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a great big hand clap. <laughs> Brother Buddy Williams taught us this. The scripture says that God would never put no more on you than what you can bear. That's right. But people will. Yep, that's for sure. So that message falls right in line. Somewhere to answer your question, Brother Joey, it's around 38, 39 years. I'd have to go back and look at the notes that I'd done. Um, but 38, 39 years that Dad's been here. Wow. I think he passed through 35 and Completed three, I think. Started on my fourth, I think. Maybe two and started on my third. I don't forget. I always look to Katie to verify that information. So the 38 years, nobody's. You can't depend on man. That was Daddy's message that he preached. Don't look upon him, but look upon God. Yes. I was thinking as Brother Joy preached, Christ at 30 years old, began his ministry. Three and a half years is how long he was on the earth That's right. to work his ministry. And from then on, it was by faith. If I'm right, and this is the year of God, the year of the Lord Jesus Christ, 13, you may have three and a half years of good. This may be your three and a half year warning, but I do know this. If it is or is it not, it's still a warning of God. Don't depend upon man. Put your eyes upon the Father. Yes. Doesn't matter if I drop, grab the flag, don't let it touch the ground. You grab that word of God and you continue on. Hallelujah. And you preach the gospel that God has given you. And like Brother Joey said, <laughs> be careful what you ask for, you might get it. If you didn't hear me, I said in everything that goes along with it. I had a lady in this church not too long ago. She said, I can't wait till my husband begins preaching. I said, I pray he don't never. Because, see, I know the agony behind it. I know the troubles. I know the late night phone calls. I know the talking about it. I know that you can't please everybody. You had, seven, you had 17 years of good. <laughs> no, Brother Joey, no. I know you are. I know you are. He knows. He knows. And uh, I've asked Brother Joey to partially, I hadn't got to talk to him as deep as I wanted to, but when he's not busy elsewhere, I would really appreciate Brother Joey to come and be with us and help us. Show me how to build. He had a good good deal with it. And he knows important people. You know, so he can... He just had a... a see, I can't even think of his name. Who was that big singer you just had with you? He's a better preacher, actually. What, what? Quentin Mills. Quentin Mills. He just had him in a tent meeting. And Quentin's been all over the biggest churches in the world. But he had him down there at a, at a tent meeting. 
And that ain't the first time he's done it either. See, Brother Joyce influential. We know that. That's, that's what's influential about it, that he does know God. And yes, the reason that she feels so comfortable or, or whatever the word would be is because me and Joey's brother, so it makes her my sister-in-law. Y'all didn't know that. But my mama adopted Joey, so he's my brother. And, and uh, yeah, him and Benny Chester, they're my brothers. Good or bad, they belong to the McKinney family. They was adopted in. That's why they keep their names. They don't want to be associated with us all the time. No, we love them. We thank him. I thank you for coming out today and being with us. I do understand the message this morning. It was for me. I've been disappointed a lot. Took a lot of pressure. Caused me finally just to have to, just about have a nervous breakdown that don't nobody know about. We're going to try to get off this week, me and the wife, and rest up a couple of days. If, uh, if the Lord be willing, we're going to do that. But if you would, Brother Don, set this over here. The Scripture says that he's worthy of his hire. Brother Joey ain't asked for money. He didn't expect none because he knows that I ain't got any. But I am sure this one thing, what I do got, I'll give it to him because he'll take it and use it for the gospel. He's going somewhere else tonight to preach and we want to make sure that he gets there and back without the help of them. So if you got it, give it. If you don't, find it and give it anyway.